Lo and behold, there is an issue with this print. And as you can see, there are some curls and spaghettis just behind it. And I couldn't figure out before what would cause random curls and random misprints before in other prints. But the culprit is just the cable. So as with everything 3D printing, which you would probably get used to if you have a 3D printer, is that once you start working on a project, you kind of create yourself other projects. The project today is really just optimize and print out cable chain which would interlock itself and would be modular and would allow me to easily tie at, at a minimum clean this thing up and at a maximum you know for it not to drag across the hot bed once it gets closer to the edge and so the plan is to print out a lot of different pieces which would interlock together which i'm going to show you in a minute and as I was printing these, of course, you can encounter problems because several batches, several hours and days to print out. One of the batches failed. And as you can see, that line between the two solid layers is where the clog in the actual hot end happened. Um, it continued pretty well after that for whatever reason. I guess it just unclogged itself, but it ruined the whole batch. And here you can even see that it started and somewhere in the beginning, but then it continued as it were. Now, one of the main skills in 3D printing is patience or honing the patience because you can just reprint things or readjust things and you kind of need to allow extra time. And that's exactly what I did here. Too many parts to count, but really it just came into a couple of categories. The chain links and the fixing elements in the beginning and the end of the chain. One of those oddly satisfying things, but everything precisely clicks in, especially those cable fixings. Next, I started by assembling an actual chain and testing it out on the printer and just how would that look like. To actually assemble it, I had to disconnect the filament and pull it out. I did a cold pull and just to prove it to you, I had to heat up the hot end. Don't just pull it and yank it for whatever reason. As you can see, the actual tail of the filament is quite messy. That's exactly how it should look like when you pull it out, when it's actually heated up. Now, Ender 6 comes with this cage or this uh, enclosure, which I had to take out. But the first one was just to take out the Bowden tube, adjust the motor so that I can have the easier access. I just moved the hot end to the corner and that also extended it. So I know exactly where the maximum of the chain length should be because you can take on one link or take off one link as needed be. I also took off the old tubing and then started measuring how the actual fittings would look like. As you can see here, I had the trouble and the trouble was that those ridges, the deep ridges on the ends of the actual frame are there for the actual enclosure. So I could reprint the part and redesign it to add a bit of spacing or just make something out of wood. And that's exactly what I did. It just was the easiest. It was a bit rough. I didn't even sand it as you can see, but it will do. Next, I took the actual block, measured the holes for the bolts and just simply drilled through it. Fits well, has a bit of character, it's oak block, but something's missing. Much better. Next, I just had to pick the right bolts with the right length so it doesn't stick out too much. I ended up with M3 by 35 millimeter bolts, which are standard. And now Ender 6 is a bit painful to maintain because every time you have to take off these panels with a lot of screws to undo. But to assemble everything, all you're gonna need to is to feed the single cables through the last bits. Actually it depends on the design you're gonna print or go for, but ultimately I just did cable by cable management. They're tagged in Ender, printers but they might not be so be careful that you plug back in the cables if this is a printer of course you're going for 
Lastly, putting back the panels and screwing it gently, hoping that everything works and I don't have to undo it. One important thing to note is that for the actual hot end fitting, I had to cut out the channel for the cables. I just didn't want to disassemble the hot end and I did have a few concerns that maybe it's a bit too heavy, which could cause sagging. But then I thought that extension and maybe its rigidity between the parts, between the segments could kind of save it. So let's see how that goes. And all you really need to do then is to put the cables back into the channel, clip as many individual segments as needed. I also put down the enclosure, put through the Bowden tube and clipped everything, added filament and it's time to test print. And I feared that this could happen. It kind of unclipped. I guess sometimes the small parts in the design are the most important ones and you just don't fiddle with them. And so because of the channel I created, I feel like it destabilized the actual fitting to the hot end. And as you can see, it doesn't really hold the chain in place. It just unclips itself. At least the chain doesn't drag on the hotbed. So it's an improvement, but I'm definitely not done with this.